Let's get you ready for the monster matchup Sunday on this radio station. Cowboys, Ravens with Dallas Cowboys color analyst Babe Laufenberg joining us every Thursday at this time on the DNM Leasing Hotline. Good morning, Babe. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Do you guys want to take your shots at me for the trivia last week? Get them all out right now? No, I think we did it enough. Oh, yeah, yeah, we're good. Yeah, that's, that's one of those things that can kind of just stand on its own. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hey, I'm on to Cincinnati. Yeah, there you go. I'm on to Cincinnati. Okay, right. you ready? Yeah. 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 Okay, so Lamar Jackson, he's won three division titles. He has not sure. started it or played in a Super Bowl. Dak Prescott has won four division titles. He has not played in or started a Super Bowl. Only one quarterback has won five division titles but never played in a Super Bowl. Can you name him? Philip Rivers. I was thinking of him. That was a good uh, guess, but it's not right. It's but it's a good right. guess. That's a great question. That is a great question. Hang on. I'm going to get this here. Five division titles, <clears throat> never never played in a Super Bowl. Now, he was on the team that made a Super Bowl, but he didn't play. Bledsoe? Good. Probably another good guess, but he did play in the Super Bowl. They got beat by Green Bay. Oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Five division titles. Huh. McNabb played in McNabb. one. McNabb. Uh, Sims played in one because you said on the team but didn't Correct. play. So Wentz wouldn't have won five. How Joe about the Sims, decade? By the way, was, uh, I'm gonna, uh, the 90s. Uh, really, no, excuse me, 2000s to the 2010 decade. Okay. Played for 15 years or something. <laughs> do we, do I have to bring Peyton in? Peyton. No, no, no. We're no, going to get this. Peyton. We're going to get this one. Pey- Peyton, give us the answer. Oh, no, Andy Dalton. No. It'll be uh, Alex Smith, guys. Alex Smith. There here. you go. Oh, that's a good one. He that's won, a good one. There you go. He won that many division titles? Yeah. 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 I mean, they he won it every year. Hey. Once, once, once Manning retired, they won like four in a row, didn't they, in, in uh, the AFC he, West? He, he wasn't uh, there that long in Kansas City. He would have had to win a lot of them in San Francisco. Well, they won in like, San right? Francisco. Yeah. Uh, but he, not everything you know, is around Peyton. Too. No, no, no. But they, he won like three in a row after Peyton left. He was there until 2018. He was, he was a really good quarterback in my mind. But never got to the Super Bowl. So, as you all know, anymore, that's all we judge him on. <laughs> all right. I do have something to bust your balls about, though. Not trivia. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> the run game. I, 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 I was shocked early in the season previewing. We we're like, who cares about the run game? It's about the pass. It really doesn't matter. Did the Saints game change your mind about run defense? Um, Don't be stupid. You, you can't be that bad. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you can be an average. You can be an average running team, and you can be an average run defense, and you can go win the Super Bowl. Yes. You, yeah. you really can so, but you know, you can't get hammered for two hundred yards on the ground. So, yeah, but no, it didn't. It didn't change my mind in terms of again. I, I, I say it a million times, and, and McCarthy says it right. He, he says it in a different way, but big plays come in the passing game. Yeah, and points come off big plays. Shoot, we saw uh, New Orleans seventy yard one play drive. Right, it was great. Cowboys dominated time of possession early, but guess what? <laughs> They were down because they were giving up big plays to the Saints. Screen pass, right, to Kamara. So the big plays come in the passing game. Points come off big plays. I I let a team, if I could take away the pass, I'm going to take away the pass. I don't care about the run. How how bad is this run? Here's the problem. Here's the problem. Excuse me. They gave up both the pass and the run against New Orleans. You've got to take something away. How bad is this Ravens matchup from a run defense standpoint? Well, I guess any time, you know, you got Lamar Jackson and Derrick Henry in the same backfield, you're probably going to have some, some issues with them. And uh, here's the thing, too. You know, everybody talks about, hey, we're going to run the ball. We're going to run the ball. We're going to be a physical team. We're going to run the ball. And five plays into it, they start throwing it all around. Baltimore has been a top three rushing defense in each of the last, excuse me, offense top three rushing offense in each of the last six years. So when John Harbaugh says we're going to run the ball, they're going to run the ball. And obviously what makes them unique is Lamar Jackson. Um, It's so funny too. You know, you guys have been there. You go to a kid's game, you look out and there's a kid out there and you just say, man, that kid is really good. He's a lot better than these other little kids. And you go to a high school game and you say, wow, that 
that one kid really it's good and then college it gets a little closer and then you get to the pros and there's great athletes all over the field right and you might be marginally better than the other guy lamar jackson is still the best athlete on the field you still look at it and say wow that that number eight's a lot better than the other kids out there <laughs> which is which is crazy when you get to that level right yeah, it's he's the most astonishing of the most astonishing athletes in the world. Like that's that's what happens yeah. when you're in the NFL. His throwing it, compared to early in his career, how is it different? You know, he's getting better, obviously, and uh, he. You know, the thing that is funny is he just has such a unorthodox motion, right? It, it's just not something that you would ever teach or coach, but he's accurate with it, and uh, obviously, you, you play the run so heavily that. You know, I don't want to say it's easier for him to play quarterback, but when you're focused on, you know, sometimes, obviously, and it'll happen in this game, you put a spy on him. Well, that's taking either a guy out of pass coverage or a guy out of the rush. So he's really playing against 10 guys because all that guy's doing is waiting for Lamar to break the pocket. What do you think about this, too, fellas? What do you think about Micah as a spy? Oh. Oh. Over, over Sean? Overshow would have to play to spy, Bobby. (laughs) You you could go. (laughs) Very good. Very good. (laughs) That's a trivia question. How do you use a spy if he's not on the field? No, but you put both those guys on the field and one drops, one, you know, they set the protection to Micah, then Micah becomes a spy. Here's the thing, too. You the the guy you put out there as a spy is not your best athlete. Right? It's your it's your fourth defensive back or fifth defensive back. It's those guys. Now, nobody ever puts their best player. So I'm not saying every right. play, but Lamar kills you. I mean, he's going to let's, hey, Micah gets an outside pass rush on him. He's going to step up and get away from that, right? You can almost guarantee that Micah is going to have a part in that play. If you can get a little rush on Lamar, force him either up in the pocket or out, obviously Micah is big enough to, to tackle him and fast enough to track him down. That's, that's the big law. Now, trust me, no inside information there. <laughs> but. <laughs> I, well, I think, Zimmer suggested yeah, yeah, it the other day. Well, he kind of, I don't know what he was doing with that. I don't know if he was having fun. Or, yeah. But I need to suggest it to him. And again, it's not gonna, you're not going to give a steady diet of it. The Cleveland game, they dropped uh, Micah and Demarcus Lawrence both out of, and Bobby probably saw this, but they dropped them both into pass coverage. They were both on the line. They dropped them into pass coverage. They set the, Cleveland set the protection of Micah. All of a sudden, he's dropping, and they got a sack. So your two best pass rushers, right, Demarcus Lawrence and, and Micah drop into coverage, and they got a sack because it screwed up Cleveland's protection. So there's, there's some things you can do. We're talking with Babe Loffenberg here on 105.3 The Fan. We're normally uh, below the belt rests, uh, oh, except wow. on Thursdays, but below the belt typically brought to you by a number one air. Uh, babe, the offensive line play uh, for the rookies, B.B., Guyton, um, what are your thoughts on how they've played it? it Felt like on a couple different of those reps against New Orleans, that some of the games and the stunts were, were getting to the communication angle for those guys. Yeah, and I, I hate to say, I mean, it, it sounds like I'm an apologist, but you, you got to remember, these guys are rookies. Uh, Guyton has never played left tackle. BB has never played center. And they're out there going against, obviously, NFL defensive linemen and stunts, as you said, and twists and all this, and they're seeing it for the first time. But, uh, you know, you, you just hope it's two steps forward, one step back for him. But, yeah, Guyton has not been, I don't think, as good as people were hoping for. Uh, he hasn't been awful, but he hasn't been, he hasn't been you know, great. But, again, he's, he's his second game into his pro career as his BB. You just hope that they're going to get better and – you have to think that they will. I think they're both good players, right? We'd agree watching them. They're both yeah. good players. But, hey, it takes time. It takes time. Babe, we know that McCarthy Watch is going to be week to week. Mm. Where are you with <laughs> Coach Watch after two weeks? Well, it, it is funny. I, I think the whole NFL is funny, by the way. Um, you know, it's a different era of coaching. It really is. You know, you think of Tom Landry or, or any of those, Don Shula, go back you know, you, you didn't have the two-point decision to be second-guessed, right? You didn't have challenges that are going to be second-guessed. By the way, John Harbaugh was 0 for 2 last week, and the media was getting on him up there on his challenges. Mm-hmm. You know, do I take the ball? Do I defer? They didn't have the analytic community now 
weighs in after every play. You know, you've got, I mean, it's this instantaneous feedback of you sucked or you're great. And I just, I can't imagine it's as much fun as it once was coaching. And here's the thing too, McCarthy, uh, you know, he's going to be, if he wins eight games, eight more games, excuse me, if they go nine and eight this year, he's 12th on the all time win list, right? If he wins the Super Bowl at some point before he retires, uh, you know, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's got two Super Bowl wins. He'll be a top 10 winner in the coach. So there's kind of a lot at stake for McCarthy. I don't think he thinks that way. I don't think his ego allows him to think that way. Shoot, you guys can ask him tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we know what the Hall of Fame means. Yeah, we know what the Hall of Fame means to to all these guys when they they finally get in. or, or knocking on the door, but he again, he, he wins another Super Bowl. It, it's a it's a ticket to Canton for him. Now here, Sirianni, right? I know you don't like his face, but <laughs> <laughs> Tolo. he's. You know what's funny about Sirianni too? You look at Dan Campbell, and people that have never met Dan Campbell say, you know, I like that guy. And you look at Sirianni, and people that have never met Sirianni say, yeah, I don't like that guy. <laughs> but he he's been up there three years in Philly. He's made the playoffs three consecutive years. He's been to a Super Bowl, and he's he's week to week, and so it's just the coaching thing is yeah. again. I, I can't imagine it's a whole lot of fun for these guys anymore. Babe, uh, Bryce Young has reignited the young and rookie quarterback discussion in the way it's handled throughout the league. You're a quarterback. Yeah. What's your take on it? Yeah, um, I don't want to say I wasn't a huge fan at the start, but. You know, he's on an awful team. We go on and on with that. But you look at the, the three rookie quarterbacks starting right now, Bo Nix, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams. They've thrown 176 passes. They have yet to throw a touchdown. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just so hard. I, I would Again, I've always been in the philosophy. If I were a coach, if I were a GM, whoever has the say in the thing, I, I would not start a rookie. I, I just wouldn't. Caleb Williams obviously has a little bit of a – head start on his deal because he is with a good team. They have a, the Chicago defense is awesome. I think it's underrated because the offense is so bad. But And I, and I do think Caleb Williams will come out the other end. But, hey, Gerard Mayo is doing Drake May a favor up in New England by not playing him. Uh, you, you look at the guys, too. Tom Brady, right? The, maybe the two greatest quarterbacks of all time. Tom Brady threw three passes his rookie year. Joe Montana didn't start become a full-time starter until his third year in the league. And I, I just think, I think they ruin more guys by putting them out there before they're ready than the Troy Aikmans of the world who went 0-11 as a rookie. I was there. I was on the team. I saw it. And who, who are able to fight through that and get through it mentally and come out the other side. Hey, I was here. People wanted Troy Aikman benched for Steve Walsh. Of course they did. Yeah. <laughs> he hadn't won a game. And I, I, I just sitting there, hey, stay the course, stay the course. But not everybody's like Troy Aikman in terms of that that mental toughness of being able to fight through that. Babe, fantastic trivia recovery. We know you have a fantastic <laughs> call on Sunday. Thank you. We'll do it again next week. Thank you. I, I knew I needed to prove myself to you guys. I knew oh, I good. needed to show you I could do this. 